Hi, what I'd like to do today is to show you how I built this model of one of Pittsburgh's two inclines. This is the Duquesne incline and I actually built a model of it in G-scale. This is HO, I think you can tell. Uh, this is one of the cars that I built oh, 12 or 13 years ago for a G-scale version of the Duquesne incline that I ran out in front of my house over Christmas as a uh, part of a Christmas display. And this one was built from scratch. These are just pieces of uh, real thin oak that I cut and glued together and painted and it, it worked out well, but when I decided to revisit it in HO, I decided to do a couple of things. Uh, the main difference is now I have a laser cutter and I can use a computer to do the design and a lot of the layout and let the laser cutter do the tough work of, uh, of cutting it to size. And the beautiful part about a laser cutter, of course, this is HO. I can very easily scale the drawings. This is about 1 32nd scale and this is about 1 20th scale. So I can make it any size that I want. Uh, the way this thing operates is there's HO track at 30 degrees, just like the real Duquesne incline. At the top, and I'll talk about this a little bit later on, is a, is a pulley that uh, just has a cord wrapped around it that sends one car up and one car down. So the first thing I would like to do is to take uh, some time on the computer and show you how I laid this out in Corel Draw. Then we'll cut it and uh, take a look at some of the mechanisms that are required to make it all work. This is Corel Draw version X6, which came out in about 2012. And I use this for all the design work that I do for the laser cutter. Let's uh, bring up the first set of uh, files. This is the car for the, uh, for the incline. What I did to design all of this was to start with a picture that I uploaded uh, or actually imported into Corel Draw. And I simply drew a box next to it. And in that box, I added windows, I added a door on one side, and all the detail that I needed. And by get, having the photograph always there, it made it much easier to uh, keep the proportions right and keep it looking good. The parts are, can be seen here. This, of course, is the car itself, the two sides, the two ends, and the bottom. Notice that the top of the ends is curved for the roof. Down here is a real interesting detail. Uh, the windows, you'll note, are black and green. The part of the window that's going to be cut out is black. The part that has a, uh, a border around it is green. That's important because, as I mentioned in the, uh, the other part of the video, I cut out uh, of, of heavy paper, yellow paper, that detail. And if you take a look at what we have down here in red, these are the pieces that get cut out of the, uh, the cardboard in yellow, uh, yellow cardboard, and wind up being glued into those recesses that we have in the car to give a real nice detailed look. Let's take a look at the other stuff on this. Uh, this is the front, or, the, or excuse me, the base of the incline, which is composed of a cube made up of these four pieces. And these sections, which hold the, uh, these tiny holes down here, hold the, uh, the wheels for uh, the front and the back. This happens to be the back, and these are the, for the front wheels of the incline. Up here, we have the clear story, which is this section here in the picture. This part here would be done in plastic, uh, the same as the body of the car. These are the pieces that make up the actual roof. There are two of them, and I probably should have them separated. Let's pull this one off. This is the first, or the main roof, I suppose you would say, right here. And I made this out of uh, medium-heavy cardboard, which I cut out with a laser cutter and then curved to match the curve that I have here, and also the curve that I have here on the clear story. Painted it flat black. Did the same thing then with the piece of roof that goes on the very top. It sits about here in the actual drawing. If you look here, it's right there. And again, that was curved to fit uh, on top of the, uh, on top of the uh, clear story. Now, in order to get this to the laser cutter, let's say that we wanted to cut just one of these 
ends. I would highlight what I want to cut, and up here is an icon that uh, comes from a plugin that's available with, um, excuse me, available with the laser cutter. If I click on that, and then click on the laser cutter software, you'll see that what I just had selected is imported into the laser cutter software. This is a program called RD Works, and it talks directly to the laser cutter. If you look down here, it says port, and it has an IP address. That's the IP address of the laser cutter itself. And up here are the colors that I talked about. There's black and there's green, and if I double click on the black, it shows that the black layer is output, yes, you can turn it off if you wish. The speed that the laser is going to travel across that uh, object is nine millimeters a second, which is pretty slow. And what mode it's going to cut. And 77 happens to be the maximum power level that I can take my laser cutter to and still keep it in safe limits. So it's going to be cutting full power at nine millimeters a second, which will cut really nicely through that plexiglass. If I click on the green, you'll see that it is also output. The speed is much faster at 35 millimeters a second. And is it cutting? No, it's scanning. And I'll show you what that means in a minute. And the power level is considerably lower than the 77 we had up here. If I click on this little uh, monitor screen, I get a preview. This is what the laser cutter is going to do. If I click on simulation, you can see the etching or the uh, the uh, engraving going on on the edges back and forth back and forth call it scanning in a moment it's going to go around the windows and cut them out and you'll see it going around the entire part and cutting that out once we have a drawing done and uh, you want to cut something again just highlight it let's take one of these uh, little sections of uh, window frame I'm going to send that on again to the program that talks directly to the laser cutter RD works and you see I've got two sets of those. And let's take a look. Now you'll see that the color up here is red. And red is set to a speed of 100 millimeters a second, very fast. It is going to cut 35 uh, power, which is about half power. Let's say OK to that. And again, if we do a preview, you'll see this time it just goes a whole way around very quickly. And if I want to set that up on the laser cutter, what I do is I, I'll click on Start. And I immediately click on stop because that sends the job to the laser cutter and stops it so I can go over there and start it uh, manually with the, uh, the control panel. So we'll shrink this back down again and walk over to the laser cutter and have a look. Okay, we're now at the laser cutter. There's the control panel we'll be using in a moment. And what I've done is to put a piece of the uh, heavy paper, light cardboard, whatever you want to call it, into the laser cutter and I've placed it underneath the head. I've adjusted the distance between the laser and the paper to be about, uh, about four millimeters. And what I'm going to do now is hit a button on the control panel that says frame. And that just shows me where it's going to cut. And now I'm going to say start. And I want you to note one thing. I turned off a blower that's normally turned on that blows air out of the nozzle and clears away the smoke and things. I blew, I turned that off rather because if the blower were on it would uh, blow the pieces around and probably cut through things that I don't want to have cut. So let's get that started. Quite a bit of smoke because that blower is off. Okay, and at this point, as you can see, take the piece of paper away and there are my frames that will go around the windows. We're back at the laser cutter and this time I've got a piece of plexiglass. This is just a 16th inch plexiglass or acrylic from the hardware store. You can see a lot of other things have been cut out of this and I've got a, uh, an end piece from one of the HO cars in there, which is pretty small, but I wanted to show you how it cuts. I'm going to hit uh, frame, and you'll recall that just shows me where it's going to cut. Now I'm going to hit start, and I'll leave the top open, 
It's a lot noisier this time because I have that blowing fan on, so you'll see less smoke. But here it goes. Now it's doing the, uh, the etching or the scanning of the window frames. I'll try to get in there a little closer. The middle frame is a little bit higher. Now it's doing the two lower ones. It's just finishing up the bottom of the frame and now it's going to go in and cut out the individual window panes. And when that's done, it will go around the whole thing. Okay, the panes are all cut out now. And here we go with the uh, outline of the end of the car. Curve for the roof. And we're done. And there's the piece. Pop out those little window panes. And you can see the etched. That yellow is just some protective film that's on top of the, uh, the acrylic when you get it at the store. Let's take a few minutes to look at the other files that are used in CorelDRAW. We'll leave the, uh, the car behind and take a look at the support system. This is what I designed to support the track. Now, the largest thing that I can cut in my laser cutter is about 18 inches long. And that's roughly what this is. As a matter of fact, I can pull a measuring thing down. It's just about 18. That's not enough. I've got about three feet of track on the, uh, the little HO uh, incline that I built. So what I did is I created one section. And what we're going to do is build two of them. And as you, I'm going to show you here in a second. If I have a second one, notice how these little pins come out of one and go into this guy, which will give me a three foot long track support. Just for fun, let's move that in tightly. And then to make it a little bit stronger, let's see if I can get in tight here. Yeah, these pins go in just like that. To make it a little bit stronger, I have these uh, sections that go underneath. This one, for example, as you can see, is going to go into the pins. This will be uh, underneath and aimed up to support that, kind of like an I-beam. So all of these pieces go together to make the support system cut out of uh, eighth-inch plywood. These are the pieces for the pulley. You may recall that this one here was about an inch in diameter, and that was made out of quarter-inch plexiglass. These two were an inch and a quarter in diameter, and they were made out of eighth-inch plexiglass. So that's something else we would need to cut. Now, in addition, let's take a look at the buildings that I made. Now, I did not try to make a 3D model of the building at the top of the Duquesne incline, but you can see where the cars go in right here. I brought a picture in and then made a 2D representation of it with the windows in roughly the same place and the opening for the, uh, uh, for the incline in the same place. Some of it is done in black, and as you can see, some is done in green. So we're going to etch out the green or scan it, and we're going to cut out the black. And in a similar manner, the bottom building, I brought in two pictures. And over here, I came up with a representation in 2D with that. One of the tricks that I pulled is I have it forward, facing forward at the bottom, looking like this. But then I turned it around inside out. This is one of the neat tricks you can do with Corel Draw. If I do this, now it's inside out, or I'm looking at it from the back. I made one for the back of this same uh, bottom section, bottom building. So either way you look at it, you're going to be seeing uh, the bottom building, either forward or reversed. 
to put all of this together, of course, you take the parts that we cut out with the laser cutter, and here's a couple of the uh, samples that I put together. Glue those together, and here's one of the cars. And it simply has uh, a bottom, two ends, and two sides. Glue those together, spray paint them red, but the question that you might be asking yourself, or at least I ask myself, is how do I get the detail around the windows? Uh, as we showed in the Corel Draw um, uh, work, there's an etched area. I can show you on this larger car. This is just uh, a piece of plywood uh, that was cut out for the car. And what I did is I cut out the windows, of course, and I etched an area around the windows as the frame. But even with that etched area, to take the time to uh, paint that with a paintbrush would be very tedious. And of course, with spray paint, it would be virtually impossible. What I did is I came up with a little trick. Because Corel Draw and the laser cutter are so precise in what they do, I was able to cut out, and this is a uh, oh, thin cardboard, we used to call it oak tag, like a, a heavy paper, and I used yellow paper that's cut to the exact same size as that etched area, and I can lay that piece of yellow paper right in there to give me the detail around the window, and of course if I put a little bit of white glue in there first, it's going to stick and it's going to give you the detail that you see on these little HO cars as well. Uh, it worked beautifully. I was quite pleased with that. The other thing that I'd like to show is how this uh, mechanism up at the top operates. Uh, I'll put a, a couple of pictures uh, superimposed over the video so you can see it in more detail. But there's a motor and the pulley. Let's talk about the pulley first. The pulley, as we saw in the Corel Draw video, is made up of three pieces of plexiglass, two eighth inch pieces about an inch and a quarter in diameter, uh, a quarter inch thick piece that's about one inch in diameter, and I glue the three of those together to make a little pulley. Here's one that's glued up. The problem with this is it's going to spin at the top and there's a piece of thread, uh, it's called button thread, I guess a little bit heavier than regular thread that connects the two cars. If I just ran that across, I think when the pulley spins it would just allow that cord to spin there and wouldn't do anything. It doesn't have enough grip. This is way too shiny. So what I did is I came up with an idea of taking a piece of bicycle inner tube and stretch it out a little bit so that it's uh, a little easier to work with and wrap it around that plexiglass pulley. I think you can see where I'm headed here. I'm going to get it over, and I may not take the time to do the whole thing right now, but the idea is to pull that rubber over the pulley, get it on both sides, so that you wind up with a rubber channel down the center of the pulley that's going to give quite a good grip uh, to, the, to the pulley as it spins and that thread is going to uh, grab onto the rubber and propel the cars up and down. There you go, that's almost properly done. You can see the, the little valley there in the center where the, uh, the rubber goes into the middle of it. Now, how do you connect the pulley to the motor mechanism? Well, the motor I used, these are beautiful little gearhead motors that you can get from Banggood and Amazon, a few other places. And if I take a, uh, this is 5 volt uh, line that I'm pulling up, it's spinning at a nice rate. And if I grab it with my fingers, there's no way I'm going to stop that thing from spinning. Well, how do you connect this to the pulley? Well, what I did is I found something called a Dubro collar. Here's the, uh, the container, DU-BRO collar. This happens to be an 8 inch diameter version. And it's a little donut with a set screw in it. And it comes with a, uh, an Allen wrench for the set screw. And if you put that Dubro collar over the shaft, the shaft has a flat area in it, tighten that set screw. Now you've got a permanently attached collar. And that collar gets soldered to a piece of quarter inch brass tubing. And that quarter inch brass tubing is the same diameter as the holes in the pulleys they go right in there so you wind up then with the pulley spinning on top of that motor. 
The next thing I'd like to talk about is what is controlling the cars as they go up and down the, uh, the track. The controller is based on the BARC, B-A-R-C, which stands for Blinking Auto Reverse Controller. This is an Arduino-based device that I designed in the last year or so, and it's designed to run a trolley back and forth on a, a track. The only difference with this, the modification I had to make, and of course I had to make all of these uh, things are in great detail on my webpage at trainelectronics.com. But the basic uh, con change that I had to make is I had to have a sensor at the top up here. And I just put my finger in front of that sensor and you see the trolley or the uh, incline stop and it's going to reverse here in a minute. If I hit it again, stop, reverse. There is a laser at the top of this, I don't know if you can see it, probably not in the video, but there's a tiny laser here shooting across to a photo transistor and it works the same way as this one right here. Hopefully you can see the LED changing, maybe you can hear the clicking. When I break the laser beam, you can see the laser on my finger there, it's, it's flipping a relay. In this case what it's doing is it's telling the auto reverse controller when that beam is broken to stop, pause, and reverse. It's a very uh, reliable, simple way to do it, and one sensor will detect either of the cars. It doesn't matter, and it works beautifully. Last thing I'd like to do is just to show you how the whole thing is put together. As I said, there's a piece of uh, what they call button thread connecting the two cars. I decided to simplify things a little bit I would put magnets on the end of the cord. Hopefully you can see there's a small magnet attached to the end of the thread and a magnet on the front of the car and they just grab onto each other real nicely and allow me to uh, take it apart and put it back together again kind of quickly. The top building, at least the representation in 2D of the top building, is also held on with magnets. You can see I have some magnets glued to the back of it and some magnets glued um, actually screwed to the side of the uh, of the track and the same on the bottom the bottom building there are a couple of magnets here matching magnets there so I can take the whole thing apart and uh, move it from place to place without too much difficulty uh, hopefully you got a couple of ideas from this project I had a great time uh, putting it together and I've taken it to a couple of uh, train shows and people have enjoyed that as well uh, if you have any questions as always, drop me an email, and there's quite a bit of information on my webpage, trainelectronics.com slash incline, uh, which will be in the details down below. Thank you.